In lesson 2-3, uh, we are leaving <clears throat> our work with segment proofs, and now we're going to be looking at angle proofs, or as our lesson title says, we're going to be proving angle relationships. So let's get started, first of all, with um, what we can use as references to uh, justify the reasons for these angle proofs. And I'm just going to run through these with you. Some of these we've used already uh, quite a bit in our segment proof work and in our algebraic proof work. So let me adjust my screen here. So uh, these properties of equality, we've uh, looked at those pretty extensively. Uh, properties of congruence as well. Now um, we're going to look at some definitions and the definition of congruence is pretty much the same as what we've been looking at uh, before, though. It was dealing with, of course, uh, congruent segments, and now it just applies to congruent angles. So um, if measure of angle A is equal to measure of angle B, then angle A is congruent to angle B. So no different, really, than what we've already looked at. Some of these are going to be a review. You're already familiar with uh, what a right angle is, the definition of a right angle. An angle measures 90 degrees if and only if it is a right angle. And you could turn it around and say a right angle is an angle that only measures 90 degrees. Then uh, we have this definition of complementary angles. And we already have touched on this in the past. Two angles are complementary if the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. So let me just go ahead and point out something, though, that uh, can appear a little bit confusing, and that is the difference between the definition of complementary angles, which we just looked at, and then in just a minute, I'll just go ahead and show you, we're going to be looking at a complement theorem. And then the same will hold true with the sub definition of supplementary angles and the supplement theorem, or also known as the linear pair theorem. Well, they, they really look pretty much identical, but there's a slight difference that you need to be aware of when you're justifying your answer. So let me just go up. The definition of complementary angles is including, it's, it's more broad. It's going to include angles that may not even be adjacent to each other. As long as two angles, um, the sum of the angles add up to 90 degrees, they're complementary. That could be adjacent, that could not be adjacent. You know, that there's a lot of different ways. So I want you to think of that as a broad definition, whereas the complement theorem is specific. Two angles must form a right angle. Okay, so this would not include two angles that add together to equal 90 degrees that may not be adjacent to each other. So you're looking specifically for wording that references two angles that form a right angle. That's when you're going to use the complement theorem. If it's just saying that two angles go together to equal 90 degrees, that's going to be the definition of complementary. Okay, so I know it sounds very much the same, but it's that right angle in the description that's going to distinguish between the two. So we'll, we'll take a look at some examples of that in just a minute. And that's also true for the definition of supplementary angles. Uh, we know that two angles that add together, we've already looked at this, two angles added together to equal 180 degrees are supplementary. That's the definition of supplementary. And then we have that supplementary theorem, also known as the linear pair theorem. The definition of an angle bisector, uh, we've looked at this already in chapter one. Uh, an angle bisector divides an angle into two equal parts, so the angles are congruent, the, the two angles that are made by the bisector. And then we know what perpendicular means. Uh, perpendicular lines form right angles. Um, just like we had a segment addition postulate, now we have an angle addition postulate, and um, so very much the same in principle. These two small angles added together equal the, the bigger outside angle. 
ABD added to DBC is equal to the whole outside angle ABC. Uh, vertical angles, I think uh, we've touched on this also in, um, in chapter one. Vertical angles are those angles that uh, you'll notice they form an X. So this would be an example of vertical angles. And so if this was angle one and this is angle two, they're congruent to each other as well as these other angles, three and four, are congruent to each other. So we've already looked at that. That's a theorem. Two vertical, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. I've already mentioned the complement theorem. Two angles must form a right angle then they are complementary. So look for that language. If you see in the description two angles form a right angle, this is going to be your justification for that statement. Uh, same for the linear pair. It's got to be two angles that form a linear pair. Well, a linear pair that is formed, um, a line is 180 degrees, but if it uses this language where the two angles are forming a linear pair, then this will be the justification for that statement. And then um, if two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. So I, I kind of look at this as the reflexive property with angles. So this says if angle A is complementary to angle B and C is complementary to B, then A and C are complementary to each other. And that's also true for supplementary angles. So just wanted to run through that with you. These will be our justification statements, our reasons for the proofs uh, that we're going to be doing. And so uh, let's just take a look. Um, we'll just do a little practice. Uh, before we dive into proofs, uh, we'll do a little practice with these uh, just to kind of get a feel for how they look, how they work. All right. So... Number one, if that's symbol is missing a little bit, didn't copy all the way over, but when you see this, this is just the symbol for an angle. If angle C is a right angle, then the measure of C is equal to 90 degrees. That's the definition of a right angle. All right, if angle X is supplementary to angle Y, and angle X is supplementary to angle Z, then angle Y is congruent to angle Z. This is the property that we just looked at, the theorem that we just looked at, the congruent supplements theorem. I'll just back up a little bit and show you where that came from. Here at the bottom, congruent supplements theorem. Two angles supplementary to the same angle, they are congruent. And that's what's being described here. Two angles are supplementary to the same angle. X is supplementary to Y. X is supplementary to Z. Y and Z are both supplementary to X. In other words, then they are congruent. Congruent supplements theorem. Okay, so here's a picture of a vertical angle, and so that's the vertical angles theorem. The angles that are opposite each other are congruent. If the measure of angle P plus the measure of angle Q equals 90 degrees, then angle P and angle Q are complementary. So this is the definition of complementary. So here's a good example of how you can distinguish between the definition of complementary and the complementary theorem. Okay, if angle M and angle N form a right angle, okay, there's your clue, then angle M and angle N are complementary. So this is the complementary theorem. All right, and uh, this shape did not uh, print very well, but uh, when I enlarged it, it did not show up very well, but um, this is the symbol for perpendicular. So this is the 
definition of perpendicular. Probably print it out. Let me make that a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's it just did not. Sometimes it does not translate very well. But this, uh, it's printed out fine for you. It just doesn't show up great on this. So um, this is the definition of perpendicular. If angle W and angle X are supplementary, then angle W plus angle X is equal to 180. That's the definition of supplementary. If angle L is complementary to angle M and angle N is complementary to angle M, then angle L is congruent. So this is the congru or this is the complementary version of what we looked at up here. This was the congruent supplements theorem. So this is going to be the congruent complements theorem. If angle B, angle A and angle B form a linear pair, then angle A and angle B are supplementary. So this is the supplements theorem. It's also known as the linear pairs theorem. If angle N and angle P are complementary, then Angle N plus angle P is 90 degrees. That's the definition of complementary again. Given the diagram at the right, measure of JKM plus the measure of MKL is equal to the measure of JKL. So that's, uh, we had a member segment addition postulate. Well, this is the angle addition. Postulate. And then finally, if the measure of angle R is equal to measure angle S, then angle R is congruent. So that's the definition of congruence. Okay, now that we've uh, looked at how these are used, now let's actually put them into practice in um, our proof writing. So we'll go over several examples of proofs. So these are, um, again, uh, statements are given, so these should be pretty basic. We just have to, if you need to look back at your reasons that we just listed out, the reference guide, uh, feel free to uh, refer back to that as you're filling in these reasons. Uh, sorry, these symbols are missing on here, but they're printed out for you on your handout. So let's just jump right in. Uh, angle PQR is a right angle. Uh, that's given. Measure of angle PQR is equal to 90 degrees. That's the definition of right angle. All right, and looking at our figure, the measure of PQS plus the measure of SQR is equal to angle PQR. That's the angle addition postulate. The measure of angle PQS plus the measure of angle SQR is equal to 90 degrees. Well, uh, looking up, we were told PQR is 90 and we're actually told up in our, um, we were told that PQR is a right angle. And by definition, it equals 90 degrees. So if you remember back in our segment work, proof segment work, we dealt with the transitive property quite a bit. And here it is again. So um, it's like PQR is equal to 90. These two angles added together equal PQR. So I'll just kind of highlight what the common thread here is. Uh, 
put a box around. If you, if you compare these two statements, the commonality between the two is PQR. You're always, you're always on the lookout for common parts uh, to these two statements, and the measurement of PQR is in common. So it's kind of like if A equals B, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So this is going to be the transitive property. And then finally, uh, if we've proven that PQS and SQR equals 90 degrees, line 5 says that they are complementary. That's the definition of complementary. All right, uh, let's take a look at number two, looking at our figure that we're given. Angles two and three are congruent, okay? Angles one and two form a linear pair, okay? And our job is to prove that angle one and angle three are supplementary, okay? So we'll start off with uh, this given statement that we're provided with. And to follow that up, we're told that since they are congruent, then they are the measures are equal. That's the definition of congruence. All right, and then angle one and angle two form a linear pair. That's also given. Angle one and angle two are supplementary. Well, that's the definition of well, that is the linear pair theorem. Okay, and then um, we're told that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. That's the definition of supplementary. Angles. And now we can take a look at line number six. The measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three is equal 180. Well, up above, we said that angles two and three were the same. So we just substituted here from five to six, so that's substitution. And then finally, um, angles one and angles three are supplementary, and that is the definition of supplementary angles. Okay. Um, Number three, we are given that angles one and two form a right angle, all right? And the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 90 degrees, all right? And so we're supposed to prove that angle two is congruent to angle three. We have our given statement, and we're told that um, angle one and angle two are complementary. So notice they use the language that they used a that they form a right angle. And so this is going to be the complementary theorem. And then when we're told that measure one measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three is ninety degrees, that was given. Uh, angle one and angle three are complementary. Uh, that's the definition of complementary angles. And then we get down to uh, angle two is congruent to angle three. So if you notice up above, um, we prove that angles one and two are complementary. And then we are able to prove that angles one and three are complementary. 
So one is the common part of this, and uh, the congruent complements theorem basically says that two angles that are complemented complements of the same angle are comp are congruent to each other. So this is going to be the congruent complements theorem. All right, we are ready for number five. Four, sorry. All right, uh, number four says, uh, looking at our shape here, BE bisects ABD. All right, and BD bisects EBC. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and state given. And uh, ABE, angle ABE is congruent to EBD. That's the definition of angle bisector. BD bisects EBC, that's given. And same thing going on here with the other uh, ang pair of angles. EBD is congruent to DBC. That's the definition of angle bisector. And so finally, uh, A angle ABE is congruent to DBC. So once again, uh, we see the transitive property. So ABE is congruent to EBD, and EBD is congruent to DBC, then these two are congruent to each other. So EBD was that common thread between the two. And so this is the transitive property. All right, uh, let's take a look at number five. Looking at our figure, uh, angle RSU is congruent to angle VST. All right, that's given. The measurement of RSU is the same as the measurement of VST. That's the definition of congruence. The measurement of RSU plus the measurement of USV is equal to the measurement of RSV. That's the angle addition postulate. And the measure of VST plus the measure of USV is the whole angle UST. So just to give you a visual here, VST plus USV is going to give you that whole UST. So same, same thing here, angle addition postulate. And then we get to uh, statement five, the measure of RSU plus the measure of USV is equal to the measure of UST. So if you notice that RSU and VST are the same, and so all that happened in statement from four to five is we replaced a VST with RSU, so that's substitution. And now um, the measure of RSV is the same as the measure of UST. So uh, here we are with uh, transitive again. So I'll just put a box around the common part this time. RSV is equal to this. And this is equal to UST. So that means these two have to equal each other. And so that's the transitive property. And these two angles, since they have the same measurements, they are congruent. That's the definition of congruence. 
All right, moving right along. Number six. Angle one and angle two are complementary. Looking at our figure, angle three and angle four are complementary. So we have two given statements on separate lines. All right, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. That's the definition of complementary angles. And the same thing here for three and four. And now we have the measure of angle two is congruent to the measure of angle three. And if you look up at our figure, uh, these are vertical angles. So that's the definition of vertical angles. So if those are congruent, then line six says their measurements are the same. That's the definition of congruence. Right. Line 7 says the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. So once again, um, the transitive property pops up because if we go back up to lines, statements 3 and 4, um, 90 degrees, if we look at these two statements, 90 degrees is the common thread. If A equals B, and B equals C. Well, I guess uh, since these two both equal 90 degrees, then by transitive they can equal each other. Okay, if A equals B and it should go this way, A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Yep. So transitive property. And line 8 says if um, measure of angle 1 plus angle 3 equals angle 3 plus angle 4, um, we were able to, because of line 6, make, uh, 2 and 3 have the same measurement, so all that happened here is substitution. We just substituted 3 with 2. Right, and now we can set up this theorem that says two angles. Um, if you notice, um, oh, in this case, going from eight to nine, we can apply the subtraction property. We just subtracted the measure of angle three from both sides. And we're now down to our prove statement, and that is the definition of congruence. All right. Okay, now we're going to mix it up a little bit and um, have to provide a few statements along with a few reasons. So let's take a look. Uh, measure of angle 1 is congruent, looking at our figure, congruent to angle 4. Angle 4 and 5 form a linear pair. Our proof is to be that angle 1 and angle 5 are supplementary. Okay, so we'll do our given statement. And then... Um, we're told this line should represent the definition of congruence, so we'll put the measurement of angle 1 is equal to the measurement of angle 4. That's our definition of congruence. Statement 3, angle 4 and angle 5 form a linear pair. So the statement four is that um, 
angle 4 and angle 5 are supplementary. That's the linear pair theorem. And then for number 5, we're told this is the definition of supplementary angles. So uh, the measurement of angle 4 plus the measurement of angle 5 equals 180 degrees. That is the definition of supplementary angles. So um, since we're told that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, that means I can replace angle 4 here with angle 1. I can say the measurement of angle 1 plus the measurement of angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees with substitution. And that gets me to this proof statement. Angles 1 and 5 are supplementary. That's the definition of supplementary angles. Okay, okay, our um, example number eight, looking at our figure, angles one and two form a linear pair. That's given. So that means that um, the measurement of angle one plus the measurement of angle two equals 180 degrees. That's the linear pair theorem. Then we have our other given statement, the measurement of angle 2 plus the measurement of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. So um, if we're told that angles 2 and 3 add together to equal 180 degrees, then we can make the statement that angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. That's the definition of supplementary angles. And now if you notice that um, we, we had 1 and 2 are supplementary and 2 and 3 are supplementary. So we get to use that congru congruent supplementary theorem. Congruent supplements theorem which basically says this if if we go back and look at angles one and two are supplementary two and three are supplementary then two angles that are supplementary to the same angle which these are one and two are both supplementary to two that means that they are congruent. So that's called the congruent supplements theorem. Two angles that are supplementary to the same angle are congruent to each other. Okay, and uh, this is our last one. So let's take a look. Uh, looks like we're missing the perpendicular symbol there. We have this uh, triangle given. So we're told that um, A, B, is perpendicular to BC. So we'll have a right angle there, so that's given. Angle ABC is a right angle. That's the definition of perpendicular. And we can say that angle ABC is equal to 90 degrees. That's the definition of a right angle. Measurement of angle ABC. All right, and then line four, let's see if we can fill in this reason. The measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals the measure of ABC. So here's angle one, here's angle three, and that equals that entire angle. That's the angle addition postulate. Okay, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 90 degrees. 
So this is one of those cases where uh, I think you could you would not be wrong in either saying substitution because we've already declared in statement three that the measure of ABC is 90 degrees. And so you could just think substitution. You could also see the transitive property at work again. So um, 90 degrees is ABC. ABC is 1 plus 3, so that means 90 equals 1 plus 3. Uh, I would not argue either. If you put substitution here, that would be okay. All right, uh, we're down to number 6. We know that the reason given is the definition of complementary angles. And based off our statement on um, number 5, we could just say angle 1 and angle three, since we're told where we prove that they equal 90 degrees, we can say angle one and angle three are complementary. And that is the definition. And we have uh, another given statement, angle two and angle three are complementary. And so therefore, we're back to the congruent complements theorem. So if 1 and 3 are complementary, 2 and 3 are complementary, that means that 3 is complementary to each of these. So that means 1 and 2 are congruent. So this is the congruent complements theorem. Okay, that takes care of your notes, and um, I will have a homework help video for you uh, for the assignment, but uh, hopefully this helps you uh, get a better handle on how to do angle proofs, and um, let me know if you have any questions. I will see you next time.